Hey folks, Quillington here and welcome back to Worked Cloaks, our Dwarf Fortress run in our second pocket world. It is early autumn, a little bit of time has passed since the end of the last episode, very, very little, but a tiny little bit as I left some jobs complete. I've also planned out the construction for a road over here. And in terms of planning, I also, if we go down, 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 our main workshop floor, which currently is being used for a few different purposes, um, but is quite full right now. I have gone and planned one level below this, a living block, a room block. So I'm, I think one of the things I might do on this run is I might try to really embrace a lot of like symmetry, maybe in both axes. Like I sort of think we might end up with a, another pair of these workshop storage blocks over on the other side. And so over here, it's not perfect exact symmetry, but the idea here is to build the dining hall here and then a block that's the same size, but this is gonna be our sort of food production area over there. And then we'll have some bedrooms that sort of splay off in every direction from there. I think I might do a lot of uh, of twofold symmetry, fourfold, twofold, twofolds involved, yeah. So do I wanna start this digging immediately? I suppose so. At the very least the bedrooms digging might not be a bad idea. We'll start with that, and I guess I can probably trim down these edges over here because that would be some unnecessary mining that we may not want to go ahead and do. So, then pause, get that started. I might as well, since there's gonna be quite a lot of mining going on, I will tell our miners that they can go ahead and focus on that core job once more, which is taking them away from smoothing the dormitory, but I think that's gonna be okay. Yeah, otherwise we're getting plenty of complaints that we're still behind on cages, but in theory they're being produced. Um. Yeah, I don't know how, how much the um, the jobs are being spread out over here. What I might do is go ahead and I'm going to ask for a one-time wooden cage times 10 job at this workshop over here. And just because I know we're going to want a ton of them, I'm going to ask for a one-time 10 times bin jobs over at this uh, carpenter's workshop just to make sure to spread out some of the workload and get things kick-started. And that's going to be fine. Eat empty cages, milk animals can complete struct tetrahedrite and tiger iron now tiger iron is not iron it is a gem oh we might start some gem works at some point i don't know we might want to wait until we've got a really good gem worker let me add a work detail here we're not going to assign anyone to it necessarily but did i miss it already no there we go gem cutting gem cutter and then we'll add another one or gem setting, which might end up being the same person, but um, there's. I guess most of these are plural. Gem setters. Let me do that here too. Okay. So, yeah, we don't have, because they would show up at the top of the list, we don't have anyone with that skill. And of course, it could be developed, it could be practiced by cutting rocks into gems and things like that. But um, I, we, I think we can probably wait on the gem industry a little bit. Now, if I do run into a big um, metal vein here, I mean, other than tetrahedrite, which we seem to have like unlimited amounts of, we might have to make decisions about maybe changing how this will flow. But overall, we're okay. Oh, you're thirsty over there. Are you hauling a rock? You are hauling rock salt. Storing items. I guess we don't have... To... Did I never ask for the wheelbarrows? It's possible I didn't. Let me make a quick little um, wooden wheelbarrow and I want at least two of them please there you go one time job over here because I want wheelbarrows for our rock storage so that people don't have to carry the boulders in their hands they can just roll them around oh I've also gone and asked for rock blocks to start being made up to 10 a day until we get to 100 uh, because I want to start making things out of rock blocks for example the um oh the road that we're building over here uh, the paved road i have switched the rules for construction to just use rock blocks from now on not wood because i didn't think that a wooden road made much sense i mean it works i mean you were putting down just like as planks to, you know just make sure things don't get muddy but i'm like no nah, nah, it's time to start making things out of rock and then we won't have to cut down as many trees like we won't have to go through the labor of cutting down trees uh, and we can keep using this for lots of material i mean obviously we don't mind declaring war on the forest it is our dwarven duty after all but we also want to make things out of rock because rocks rock Although it is a grim reminder of the winter hardships to come, the supply caravan from the special peaceful razors. I'm sorry, is that our, our uh, civilization name? The special peaceful razors? Oh my God, that's so good. It's a welcome sight. 
Their eyes are alight with the anticipation of inspecting the splendid products of your industrious craft dwarves. Take careful stock of your own stores. What these merchants offer might very well be the difference between a prosperous future and a slow and meaningless death. Now, we're not going to get trade uh, wagons yet. We need to get up to, I think, barony level before that happens. So we don't need to stress really about the fact that whether or not our trade depot is accessible by wagons, but I still want to get the prep work done. So at some point, we should see some merchants somewhere walk into our base. Oh, there they are. So yeah, right now they just had some pack animals, no wagons. Um, and then we'll set up, they'll set up at the trade depot. Now we can already move some goods over here, which actually I want to do through, of course, let me pause here. Of course, I want to do this through the DF hack interface because it is so much more convenient. So we're going to go and we're going to move a couple of valuable bins because it's quite efficient to carry. Looks like I could search for loose mugs. Ideally, I'd want them all in the bins, like those finished goods bins. Uh, what else might be we be willing to sell? We could sell rough gems, but if you don't get really good value from that, there's a good chance we're simply not going to be make, able to make a lot of purchases on this particular uh, situation here. Um, if anything is like, yeah, if any, if we had any tattered, worn out clothing, we could throw them in too. But we might just do that. I'm not going to run a bunch of rock salt boulders. Tell you what, we'll consider moving some of these tourmalines and amethysts in there. Although it's possible that we're not really getting accurate valuation because we don't have a broker yet. So it looks like Skuld over here, they're at the top of the list because presumably they have collectively the most useful skills for trade. A lot of skills are involved in trade. Um, appraiser is the one that gives you the best idea of the price of the goods, but then the actual price gets modified by the social skills. We'll just go ahead and assign Skuld over here, that's gonna have to be okay. And then I wonder if there's any chance that now we get an update on some of these prices. I mean, probably it's about the same. We could consider maybe selling some plant good barrels over here. We may as well bring them over and give us a few more options. But yeah, I'm not actually expecting a whole lot of trade this year. I don't know if this is actually gonna be enough room to put three ballistas in there. I do wanna try the ballista defense. I suppose push comes to shove, I could do it on the opposite side. Shoot them in the back as they try to run through. All right, diplomacy. is on, world's the same as ever. So this is the request. This is what we would like to have brought to us. Um, I generally like to ask for leather because usually it's not something we have a ton of and we might want to start setting up some leather armor early on. Um, cloth tends to be a thing. Silk tends to be too expensive, so I don't usually do that. Um, we might have to buy iron bar. Like they, they are expensive, so I might not want to the first time around. Usually a good idea to make sure we're getting drinks. They will bring some food. You know, they'll bring food and drinks anyway. Actually, we have no, wow, we have no drinks. I'm gonna have to check our still worker. I didn't realize we were out of drinks. We'll put in an order. Theoretically, it's going to be okay. And with theoretically, we've got enough farming and things going on too. I mean, asking for the thread and buying that is usually very nice. Um, everything under miscellaneous, I usually want. Yeah, I guess we still don't have the option to save. DF hack, um, pre steam did have an option to save these requests. So it'd be easier to repeat, but anyway, we'll mark those. They will charge us more. They they were gonna ask, they're gonna um, pay extra for musical instruments next time around, but we're not gonna do that. So hang on, do we, or do we not have brewing going on? Did I not put in the drinks order in this run? Oh, I didn't, oh my, that's not great. I didn't realize that. So we're gonna set up some brew commands, brew from fruit, brew from plants. Plants is the one that's most likely to happen. Uh, much more. We can do up to 10 per day. We want to have at least, um, at this stage, at least 100 drinks. That's going to be a plenty of a buffer. And just start if you've got at least 20 of these, which you don't for the leaves and fruits, which makes sense. And then for the plants, so same amount. We're, we're targeting 100 drinks for now. And then if you have at least 20 plants, go for it, which we do have. That's expected, the plump helmet. I'm so sorry. I didn't realize I, I did not queue that up. Um, I might want to set up a second still real quick just to catch up a little. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Hmm. Uh, we're still waiting for everything to arrive. We'll request the broker at this point. Well, yeah, we might have to buy some of their booze right away. I mean, in theory, someone should hopefully start brewing pretty quickly, but we'll see. Everyone's fairly busy. Yeah, no job for one of our miners, but I'm sure that's just temporary. Okay. Our broker's having a drink right now. Right, and yeah, see, we're seeing the thirsty people command. I didn't even register that we were running low on stuff. Oof. 
loving drink. They might they might have been going to get some water. Okay, good. You're coming to trade at the depot. Great stuff. So as soon as you're here, this trade button will light up. We do have the still the, the booze drops in there and Brewer only selected does this. Theodo let me change you over here. Theodolus, you're not gonna do anything other than brew. So actually I don't really need the second brewery as it turns out. You know what? I'll just cancel that. Unless I sign a second brewer. But just one that's actually, you know, going for it would be would be nice. Theo, you're storing an item in the barrel. Zold is having a snack. So that plenty of time over here. Theo, there you go. Brewing drinks. Good. Okay. Oh man. Alright, I feel real bad. Coming to trade at the depot. Good. And there's the trade button. Excellent. So again, this user interface may be a little bit rough. We do have the DF hack trade interface, which is good. Actually, I don't kind of mind it, mind um, the purchasing side of it, right? The selling side, I much rather than DF hack. The purchasing, I don't mind. We might end up having to buy steel bars, but not right now. Stone ropes are actually often a good purchase, but I'm not going to prioritize that at the moment. Cages with some critters. No, let's quickly buy some booze. Wine, oh, let's get the milk, we'll get the beer. Okay, that should help out a lot. I don't know if we can afford weapons. We're, we're probably not gonna be able to afford much at this point. Like weapons and armor is not a bad purchase. Sand, plaster, see some of these things are kind of nice to pick up. Like we might want some plaster here so that we can um, maybe make some, some casts and stuff when we get a hospital set up. There's another plaster bag. I'm just gonna get the one. Okay, let's consider what we might be selling them. So for here, what I'd like to do is go into the uh, trade hack, go to the mug side, and then, f or sorry, go to the fort side, and then filter for mugs, and then select them all. I would like to offer them all of my mugs. So right now, the trader profit is in green, so they're definitely going to be happy with that. Okay, I'm going to throw in a box of leather. Uh, that box of cloth obviously is not going to cut it. That's way too valuable. I mean, great maybe to buy another iron. Yeah, see... I don't know if I've ever had them renegotiate when it's been in the green. We're going to do this. A little bit of meat. We're going to sell them the mugs. We're getting the drink trade. There we go. Wonderful. Thanks for your business. Excellent. Okay. So we're going to say no one's needed there anymore. We're going to complete that. So theoretically, we've got some drinks waiting over here. And in the meantime, we're also now finally brewing some drinks. That is indeed happening. Oh, I feel so bad for my dwarves. And they're going to have a lot of bad thoughts from that. Meanwhile, digging is starting to happen here. Excavation for our bedrooms. I might, well, we're going to keep a dormitory probably somewhere just to help us deal with new migrants if we don't have enough bedrooms. And it'll probably stay here for now until we go and need this hallway for anything else, right? It's a perfectly fine place for this dormitory to be. All right. Rocks, yes, good. Digging, yes, good. I think digging's quite loud. Um, let's do the bedrooms first, and then what I'll do is I'll pop this spot over here to develop the dining room, and then once that's done, I'll pop this spot over here for that. I mean, really, I should have messed around with some of the uh, the priority numbers over here. Um, well, we can still do that now. Let's, uh, for the mining, I'm gonna do super low priority on this little extra side hallway. Like that. And actually, I guess if I go and do something like this on a seven, and then on a six, do this area and then leave it on a four so they'll do all the fours out here then they'll pop these sixes and then finish the rest and then they'll do the sevens there you go that sounds like a good way to order things because yeah i think i'd like the bedroom sorted first because they have a dining hall it's not great but they have one they don't have individual bedrooms yet uh and with that in mind i guess what i'll do is i'll start the job for rock coffers and rock cabinets uh, just make one per day and just keep a couple around and a couple around please thank you okay oh yeah we got the drinks we are gonna have to get some offices for our manager and our bookkeeper at some point what I could have is some of the little spaces here that we're gonna be for workshops some of these could be the offices that might not be a terrible idea. Okay. 
And they don't need to be fancy offices early on. So actually, you can... I don't think they have to be enclosed. It certainly didn't used to have to be. I don't know if uh, that's still the same on the Steam version. I have a vague thought of like, maybe there was an issue once, but I don't know. So traps are developing there. All our traps are there on the surface, which is great. I don't know if things would like prioritize walking in the paths. I'm doing this to prevent trees from growing here, which might block caravans in the future. Don't think enemies will prioritize walking down there. If they do, it would be a little awkward. Um, and I'm thinking still, okay, leaving soon, that's fine. Oh, by the way, these pop-ups, um, I'm getting those pop-ups for merchants and migrants because I did some tweaks in my announcement.txt file, um, which I think, uh, didn't they make it, you can customize these announcements now. Yeah. So you can do that now without editing the text file, which is great. I don't know what category some of these things might be in. This isn't searchable, huh? I was say it's scrollable, but actually this one. Oh no, there it goes. Uh, oh, there you go. See, there, under all forts. What are these different ones? The sub filter for these categories, maybe? Anyway, if you go here to fort, you can see merchants. Unloading, needy depot, inaccessible site, leaving soon. These are great to make sure you don't miss anything. Cool. Okay. Um, the other thing I like is the um, uh, the strange mood, which doesn't have a default, a pop up by default. Or at least it didn't in the original Steam release. Maybe that's all changed now. But yeah, if any of our dwarfs have a strange mood and want to do an artifact, we get a nice big pop up for it. And the microwaves. Those are the ones that I really really like having yeah they'll pack up soon which is fine drinks are fine everything's digging out over here too groovy we can start um equipping these so i uh, i previously saved uh so i used the blueprint tool to copy a bedroom way back when which means those blueprints are available in my quick fort command here which is this it's my two by three by six bedroom block so you can either dig it or you can do the build, which is the put the furniture in place. So if I click and click and wait for that to be dug out and click there, it's just, it's putting in the door, the bed, the cabinet and the coffer, which is great. There we go. So dwarves are gonna start delivering that and that's also gonna take things out of stockpile, which will tell the stone masons to, or the stone carvers, I should say, to start building more of those. And we'll do some smoothing passes and stuff later on. Yeah, we'll do this. So, um, actually, I don't need all these bedrooms. Originally, I had just drawn the, like the two pairs. Well, however you want to count it. So, twelve bedrooms, you know, between the. Well, actually, only one of these blocks is twelve. I'm just realizing. So yeah, I'm mass. Sorry. Yeah. So I'm massively overbuilding the bedrooms over here. This is gonna bring us to what forty-eight bedrooms. I don't even have to go and equip all these, but I guess we'll be ready. I won't bother putting the furniture in these yet, but I guess we'll let them get dug out. For some reason, I was thinking of this section as six bedrooms, but this section of six bedrooms. So yeah, massively overdigging the uh, the bedrooms, but ah, that's fine. You know what's making us more um, more blocks now? Uh, there was tetrahedrite. That's all so far still, right? When we're done mining this out, I think we're gonna have to start doing some exploratory tunnel diggling. Diggling? Wow. Um, yeah, exploratory tunnel digging. This is red sand. We got some stone over here. So just going and just mining all over the place in here to see if we happen to maybe find a vein of minerals and then repeating, repeating, repeating on a bunch of these floors because these upper floors, I'm not planning on doing any building on. So it's, they're perfectly viable for that. And then even between this floor and down to here, we could do a bunch of that in those areas as well. So we've got a lot of opportunity for looking around for something that's not just tetrahedrite. I suppose I may as well, just in preparation for whatever might happen next, we're going to get ourselves over here a wood furnace, um, workshop furnace, a smelter, and then workshop metalsmith. So we'll be ready to go with a bit of a metal industry. Again, I did ship with uh, 50 uh, um, blocks of coal, or I think there might be coal boulders, actually. I'm not even sure uh, what I brought. They were cheap because there were three each. So we might need to start processing that. But um, we're ready to go with the metal industry. And yeah, we could start making things out of copper and maybe some silver as we smelt the tetrahedrite. All right, bedrooms are done. There you go. Now it's doing the priority six job over here and it's going to dig out the dining hall. I'm putting little alcoves here. We're going to put, I don't know, 
pretty little statues there, or maybe we can put pedestals to put artifacts in this play. I don't know what we're going to do with it, but it's going to look great when we get there. I'll probably... Yeah, I'm going to pre-smooth this room before I start putting furniture in. Yep. I mean, ultimately, this entire floor, I think every square inch of it will be smoothed as well. The hallways don't strictly need it, but we'll probably do it just because it'll look nice and consistent. Yeah, we have no shortage of rock salt. Uh, so people are clearly not hauling a lot of rocks right now, but that's because they're they're too busy to do hauling jobs. I guess, you know, pretty legit. Okay, these extra carpenters, we probably don't need to keep these extra carpenters workshops around anymore. Sort of did that as a as a catch-up thing, but really just, just the one getting the orders is probably going to be fine, so let's tear those down. Uh, any other workshops I don't have yet that I might want to get? Uh, Ashry for soap industry... Yeah, where up at the hospital? The hospital being closer to the surface kind of makes sense because that's where most of the injuries are going to happen. And it'll be a little closer. On the other hand, maybe it's more at risk of being uh, attacked. The other hand, I don't know how many hands we're at now, but many, many hands. The other hand is, uh, we'll also fairly likely be attacked in our cavern levels. And so the hospital being further down is also fine. A lot of times I put it on the living quarters floor as well, but we've got such a nice little symmetry that I'm not sure I'm going to do that. Maybe what we'll do is just below the living floor. We can put a hospital down there. I don't know what else we'd put there. Well, um, oh, I know. We learned, I think we only did this for the first time in our last fortress, and it was something I think I read in a Reddit post. A recommendation of having your hospital double as your guild for doctors because it... First of all, it gives you an opportunity to train people for more doctoring, and it also means more likely doctors are going to be spending more time in the hospital and we'll be able to respond to things quicker. Therefore, possibly this floor with the hospital, maybe this is just our guild and temples floor. Or maybe specifically it's our guild's floor and then one level down is a temple floor because it could have different layouts. I tend to make my guild rooms all kind of the same size, big enough that they can be very fancy schmancy later on. I guess this was all priority seven, so. Could have made the, the, the food production place a little bit better, but that's fine. And this is an overkill amount of space for food production, but I just want to use the same block size as this, even though it's gonna have a slightly different shape. I think I think that's okay. I think we can forgive ourselves. So I want the drinks and prepared food to be over here, so very close to the dining hall, which is also gonna act as a tavern again. Um, so I'll probably do that. Then I'm thinking we'll probably put the kitchen and a still here and then raw food storage there. We might do multiple stills eventually. And I'm actually even wondering about, do I even leave the, em the inner part empty and just sort of put the little stockpiles in these little alcoves, almost like they're shelving? I, I think ultimately we're going to need a lot more stockpile space from that, but kind of interesting. I haven't done anything like that before and it might look nice. I think, like, the idea of shelving, I think, is because RimWorld now has those great shelves and I like the way everything looks when they're organized on shelves, so I kind of like that vibe. We can make a lot, bunch of like three by one stockpiles just to make it look like things are shelved. That sounds awkward and tedious. Can you have non-contiguous stockpiles? Like, okay, if I have a three by one stockpile over here, right? And let's say I go into paint mode and I do this. Are you the same stockpile? You are. Oh, actually that's all of a sudden that's quite nice. Okay, I think we can make it look like we've got shelves. So first things, we're going to go into quote-unquote farming. Build the still. Um, and the kitchen. And I don't think we strictly need it, but just so it's ready, we'll assume a fishery over here. And... Uh, we'll also want the farmer's workshop in these places. Now, if I do this, is this, I guess that's all making the same. Ah. So this is going to be for like meals or prepared, prepared meals. So under food, we're just going to have prepared meals enabled. So that's all that goes there. Okay. And then, yeah, we'll make a new stockpile. 
Oh, this will certainly not be big, big enough for the drinks. Actually, yeah. So this one here, because it's just look like barrels on the floor, we're going to go and just do a block over here. So this is going to be our drinks stockpile. So under food, we want drinks from plants or mead. That's fine. Okay. There and there. And then otherwise, right through the middle? Sure. And actually, like, conceivably even over here. Although we might change our mind about some of this later, but we'll see. So this is going to be our raw food. So this is going to be food. We'll toggle on all, but we'll turn off prepared meals. We'll turn off drinks. We'll turn off seeds. Um... Turn off lye and lime. Because those will probably get stored somewhere else. I mean, they already look like shelves. It's kind of appealing. Oh my god. Oh, I really like that. I can't believe I've never thought about doing this. And then, yeah, just a bunch of booze barrels all put up. Because to me, the booze doesn't make as much sense to be on shelves. Even though a lot of the food will also be stored in barrels. Too bad it's not bins, because I think this looking like bins would look really good. And yeah, if we need more storage, then later on all we do is we just mash these together, right? It's fine. Just fill in these gaps. And really nothing of value will be lost. But for now, we'll go with a slightly more interesting look. Is everyone fairly busy? You guys are good. And yeah, that's all my mound at. Oh, right. I had said I was going to go and smooth the dining hall before I start placing furniture and things. So we'll throw that in. And then actually, I suppose this is an even lower priority job. We will smooth these bedrooms, which actually aren't bedrooms yet. So let's do that now. We're going to go zone. Bedrooms will be on multi-mode. Okay. Oh, I could have drug a drug. Yes, I could have drug across both of those right away to do that. Okay, so that's all going to get automatically assigned and taken care of later on. Yeah, some people are going to come smooth, but of course... Everything's still insanely busy. People are still unloading the trade depot ever so slightly. Yes. Uh, oh, let me go and build the gem, the jeweler's workshop. Possibly plural. Oh. And we may have to do, um, we may we may do our setup again where we're trying to encrust uh, our mugs, which does require some some finagling with workshops and workflows and stuff, but that's okay. Actually, with that in mind, and we might do it in this area, what if we consider um, building a craft dwarf workshop there? And this is going to be the one that's specifically making mugs. And we can leave the other one open to accept any miscellaneous workshop orders. But this one here is specifically going to be the mug maker because it's going to be assigned to like specific um, stockpiles to like dump the, the new mugs into, for example. Yeah, that might work. I've been happy with our, our mug encrusting workflow in the past, so I suspect we'll be okay with that again. Okay, so all the mining is done on this floor. So I talked about doing exploratory mining, and I think that's what's going to happen. So from the surface, We'll go down, so not this first level, because it's still pretty sandy, but this level here, which might be a mix of sand. It might be some wet tiles, too. Anyway, I'll go one level deeper than that. This one with the corner, level 40. Cool. So what we can do is we can just run a bunch of um, uh, a bunch of tunnels out. Um, mostly, if we're looking for... If we're looking for ore deposits, we only need to, like, you know, we don't need that much density of digging to be able to find it. However, if we also want to make sure we extract every gem out of this... What we might want to do is have a very, very dense digging pile that doesn't leave a gap, right? Like, let's say if we did something like this, for example, then, and assuming this pattern continued through the entire uh, floor, we would see every single tile, right? Because we'd see one side of this, one side of this. So every tile would be there. So we'd see everything you possibly could. Now, there are ways to optimize this digging pattern um, so that you don't need to dig quite as much. If you do any kind of diagonal work, for example, right? Something like this, you're seeing a lot more tiles very quickly. Now, people have figured out a couple of different ways that you can do it. And luckily, a lot of this has also been included. Uh, we'll do it on priority seven. That's fine. 
into a handy uh, dig exp command over here, which you put in a pattern, and what it will do, it will dig designate that pattern to be dug, and both the, all of these, and you can check the wiki for like um, different balances and what might be ideal. I've used a ladder a lot in the in the the past, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and do like diag five instead this time here. Or what happened if I did the cross? You can see here, like, even though they, they look like they're, it's almost like four tiles apart, right? Except that they will see every single one of these tiles. And so you don't need to dig as much as before. We, we still have to put like one tunnel that goes across and connects to anything. But that's a possibility. I think if you do clear. Can you say? Removal dig designation, presumably on this floor. I mean, I don't think we had any others anywhere else. Um, what is cross? Is it a single cross? Oh yeah, it's marked in the middle of the map so you know where the middle of the map is. That's actually really handy. I have to remember that. I've seen it before and I've forgotten about it. Um, yeah, okay. And that looks nice. I thought I canceled the cross. Must have misclicked it. Okay. Um, so none of this is going to hit the outside. None of it's going to breach the outside. So it shouldn't allow any invaders in. None of this is touching my actual base, like my unprotected, unquarantined base. So that's okay too. I think what we're going to do is we'll just from here dig out a little. And then if we just do this, uh, we'll have to. I think we'll, we'll have to do another one, but we'll get to that in a sec. This will connect all the diagonals and give us some options for, for things. So let's see if we happen to run into anything here. Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully we find some iron bearing ore, but whatever we get, whatever we get. There you go. Now our miners are going to be able to split things up. And this was all done in priority seven, if I recall correctly. Uh, actually, these diagonals didn't get a priority listed. And they must be defaulting to a four. Oh. Did they not? I saw the P, but that was like, that wasn't priority. Like you put in a number. That's not all selected vein for digging, P is across Z levels. Huh. All right. Well, that's a little unfortunate. I was hoping it would use my priority number here. But I guess if I need to do any other digging, I just put the other digging higher than a five. Uh, Cassetterite, uh, you didn't leave a chunk behind. I don't remember what you have, what you produce. Now, once all the diagonals are done, I can just use the um, the like the auto vein mine for some of these things, but I can also control V over here, which uh, will enable, it's the DF hack control to uh, designate a, a vein to be mined, which is really handy. It works it's not exactly the same as the auto mine that's built into Dwarf Fortress, but pretty similar. Similar enough that the differences don't really matter. Uh, I get over here. Oh, because what we can do after this is all done is I can just say, not even using the auto, because every tile will be visible, I can just go and do this across the entire floor to, to get everything that's been uh, noticed. And you'll notice it the uh, auto dig also doesn't um, interact with anything that's already been dug out before, which is a good little safety feature. Platinum. Well, that's very interesting. Yeah, some loam over here. That makes sense that we hit some sand. Now, it's possible that because we're exposing all this, there will be certain pathfinding um, issues with that. One thing we can do is uh, set up these traffic areas and put a restrict. Like, restrict doesn't prevent them from going through, but it will prevent casual pathfinding from searching this area. It'll search everywhere else first. Or we could just put a low traffic area 
that like over here and what will happen is any pathfinding attempts won't go and uh, try to explore this area unless it really has to but you know premature optimization to root of all evil let's not worry about it until we start seeing some frame rate drops because it might not be an issue uh tourmalines uh do we have okay we got a chunk of cassette tin ore okay use tin to make bronze yeah copper and tin equals bronze which isn't the bad material. I mean, we had a whole age based around that, but we're still really hoping to find ourselves some iron. Oh, geez. I'm, I mean, we're, there's supposed to be some on the map. I'm not crazy, right? I did embark in a place with iron, unless I didn't set the filter properly. I suppose we can use DF Hacks prospect tool to cheat to tell us how much there is, just in case I'm thinking I'm going crazy. I'm sure it's out there. We'll find it one day. Construct buildings. What buildings are we constructing? Oh, the roads out here. Yeah. Which might not have been the most important thing to do right away, but sure. So yeah, as blocks are being done, they're being delivered over here and the road is being built. And then, yeah, I think we'll... The plan is going to be to build a stone outer wall probably right here. And then once that's up, we can demolish the wooden one. It, it will mean we're going to have to tear down the road because I don't think I can build the bridge over that. So actually, this road here will probably get torn down later. But before that, I might want to prioritize the roofing part, actually. You know, yeah, I mean, I don't think we're due for a siege anytime soon. But, yeah. There's another thing that's a heck of a lot easier to build with uh, DF hack than just pure vanilla. Click and drag like this for floors. And then just cover this part over here. Because the wall itself acts as kind of a floor. Um, I don't know if that's open or not. I think, no, that's surface. That one might be open, that one might not be, but I'll do both. That's closed up. Okay, I think this is entirely sealed in, although it's hard to know for 100% sure. Yeah, this is adding a lot of construction jobs, but it's also going to maybe keep us safe. Although, we still don't have this bridge wired up. Perhaps, if I am concerned about this, let's go and build a machine's lever. We're going to put it right there. That'll use mechanisms. Once that's built, we'll connect it up to the bridge, and then we know we can seal ourselves in. Although, really what we want is a bridge here. Well, we want both, really. I guess I'll go ahead and construct this. And this is actually, this is probably a forever bridge. Uh, seal to the left, yeah, that's fine. Just on the other side of these traps, that seems fine, too. We're going to do this. I'll probably end up building a couple here, so we've got, like, redundant layers of defenses. But yeah, that, that there is what we want. And I guess what I'm going to do is build another lever there. To be ready. So one is going to be for the surface bridge. One is going to be for that tunnel bridge. Okay. And it's way too early for sieges. We don't have that much wealth developed or anything. Mm -hmm. We got some things growing. Um, I do have... Um, I did enable auto farm. So what's going to happen here is the... Uh, I'm, I just left it at default to 50. So it's going to try to end up with 50 of all farmable crops. So yeah, we'll probably see a bunch of Dimple cups or plump helmets or something else getting going. Right now it's plump helmets, which is good. That's what we're using. Actually, could use more food. And actually, I'm wondering about the plump helmets, so I should increase the number that we keep around to a lot higher. It's not a bad idea. Um, they've got an example in here for auto farm. Um, oh, oh, right. Sorry, I wanted the help side of it. There we go. Auto farm. Uh, yeah, right here. So threshold of 150 of mushroom underscore helmet underscore plump and the example actually has the uh, the pigtail as well which is a good idea we want a lot available for the clothing industry there you go and then 50 of the other things is fine but i want to make sure that plump helmets are being done aggressively um we we don't have potash yet so we're not doing any fertilizing maybe it's something we want oh yeah all this coal here from the uh the load oh, i guess we don't have a stockpile for that yet 
because I don't allow stone. Okay, let me make a giant stockpile here or stone, uh, but not other. I guess I'll leave the clay because the other stone is currently being brought to the stockpile already, but we're going to put a place for the metal ore and the economic stone for now to get brought and organized. I don't even know if I want like the uh, flux stone necessarily brought here. Um, two wheelbarrows and I'm going to ask for two more wooden wheelbarrows to be made. Their little dining hall is going to get a little crowded for a sec, but that's okay because our new one's coming along. A lot of smoothing to do still. That's okay. That's a job everyone's enabled to do, which is totally fine. Just one of the busy work jobs. Skill for smoothing increases the speed that the smoothing happens. So, I mean, it could still be valuable to specialize some people and then, you know, just using them more. But, but this is okay. I tend to do big bulk smoothing jobs, so I'm okay with having most people active on it, usually. And then what you do is you take people off of those things for their specialized stuff more and more and more. And if we were short on anything, I might consider doing that now. Oh, oh, we're from a second migrant wave. There we go. So this, uh, again, is a DF hack warning you can enable. And it just means that I've got to go. And Grazer, you can see here, the cavy pup and this horse foal were not automatically assigned to these, um, to this pasture. And I don't think there's a way to auto-assign like from new groups or anything, so I have to keep checking that. But that's okay. Maybe there's a command, or maybe there could be, you know. Some command. Find unassigned grazers. Because you can, with the stockpile, they've got the automatic options over here with the f-hack for like, um, auto-trading for example. So anything in the stockpile when a trader shows up would automatically get brought to the depot. Conceivably, they could add a feature here that I'm going to flag this pen pasture, and this is any unassigned grazers get assigned here. That will just prevent that. But as long as you get the warning that comes up, it's a reminder to, to assign them. So it's fine. It's not a big deal. So yeah, they're going to construct. There's quite a bit of blocks that go into this road construction for something that might get torn down later, but deal with it. And then, yeah, a bunch of blocks are going to get used over here for this floor. That's, I mean, that's a lot of labor. It's not like we have that many dwarves around, but I'm still feeling nervous. Although those, I don't know if those kangaroo men have returned since then, so maybe it's fine. Our little I think the shells are cool. I like it. Uh, well, we clear. Whoa, yeah, that is full up. We clearly need more stockpiles. All right. Well, tell you what we're gonna do. We'll go priority three to make sure it's above the exploratory mining. How big is this area here? Ten by fifteen. So that and then we start aligned over here right 10 by 15 there we are now we might expand the catch hole be fair specifically it's furniture and furniture stockpiles it feels like you always need infinitude more i don't know that we need more workshops what we might do is we might go and build the extra so an extra 16 workshop spaces on these and then off to the side i might just make some huge storage areas mostly for furniture like maybe we say that none of these centralized workshops have furniture storage you know, it's more more about maybe raw goods. Well, some of the finished goods could go into those these areas over here too. But the furniture, yeah, shuff off to the side. Because furniture can't be put in any bins or anything, so they always take up just massive amounts of space. So yeah, these workshops are gonna work slower if they're they're full of garbage, right? That's that's part of the issue here. Oh, I did have two carpenters workshops. Oh, so I never needed the extras. Okay, I didn't notice that. Yeah, so for now, just because I am lazy, we are going to just increase the size of our catch-all work workshop or stockpile. This is more catch-all. This is presumably not an install door, it's just one just dropped on the ground. Right, now some things can get moved. Yeah, I think I like that. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to go and get the digging started yet. But I'll put all my placeholders for where these workshops will be. They don't accidentally build in the wrong place. Later on. Yeah, our metal industry ideally would be way down by the like by the magma at some point. Then yeah, otherwise, like I don't this workshop floor. Here, I'll you know double wall. You know, we can do something ridiculous like this. Plus this will give us all like the non-economic stone we ever need. Thirty-seven high? Yep, okay, good double checking that they match and heck we can do some more in the top and bottom as well but yeah the idea will be this at some point okay uh oh um repaint add this to the catch-all for now just yeah unloading all that crap from over there which is good and hopefully these extra wheelbarrows will be brought over to these workstations. I might have, I might, I, I seem to have more than I need, which I guess is a good problem to have. Looks like the roads were all done, so there's still gonna be construction going on in this roof over here. And then we'll feel nice and secure. And then, oh, these are done. Okay, so I'm gonna relabel this to um, outer. So we're going to link this lever uh, to this bridge. And then, okay, this one here's not built yet. Um, which might be a question of priority. Let me make this a top priority here. Because um, this, so this is part of the, the planning mode. So we didn't have enough blocks to build this immediately. So normally DF hat or Dwarf Forks would be like, well, you can't build this now, you don't have blocks. But we're using DF hacks planning mode so we can plan things even before we have the material. But it happens in a queue. So now what I've done is there, I want to move the bridge. I don't know why I had to do this a second time. Um, I want to move the bridge to the top of the queue. Oh, it might have suspended for a second as people walked through. I mean, I know it's a suspended here because we don't have the, uh, the material. Um, but I want this done first just so that it can hook up the uh, the levers. Because at least if this one is level uh, hooked up, we can completely airlock ourselves. So yeah, not setting that up. We don't need the storage space for this yet. We do have a critter in a cage. We must have caught this one in a... Our cage is outside. Now... We found out that selling these is annoying because if you mark this for sale, they only take the cage itself. They don't take the critter inside, unless I think the critter inside is tamed, in which case you can sell them. So we're not sure what we're gonna do with these cages yet. We always end up with a whole bunch of them, like full of goblins and other creatures, and then I'm like, okay, now what? We're probably gonna build a bunch more. So let me try a little smoothing on that rock, that boulder, because. I suspect we might extend our cages out there later and it'll be nice to have that smoothed ahead of time. I think the grass is still gonna grow under the ceiling. If it starts dying off, well then we'll just move the pasture outside. Well, which we might do at some point anyway. Right, this is a convenient spot, but where are we gonna wanna end up? Especially with these, um, these refuse stockpiles, which at some point will be cut in half by our bigger wall. So say, do I need to remove this? But yeah, I don't think I can build a bridge over this road. So we're gonna have to remove this and then rebuild it in a slightly different size, which is annoying, but yeah, it's not the end of the world. Especially later on, we'll have more dwarves. Rebuilding a road's gonna take two seconds. It's funny, it looks like it's a top of the screen over here, even though like that doesn't happen until later. Just cause it's such a definite line that we've got happening now. Oh, um, no, okay, the dormitory can still exist. That's fine. People should theoretically maybe be claiming some bedrooms. I would love the smoothing to happen, but how is our exploratory diggy? Where is it? Right there. Diggy diggy hole coming along. Nice little diagonal lines on the map. Hmm. Well, yeah, and this one can't be accessed at all. There we go. We'll do that. Well, platinum, no steel, huh? Hmm. At least we got a few gems. 
All oh, right, and then yeah, over here. Build you to there. These diagonals can't be reached. I think. Neither can these. I'll just erase that. Uh erase that. There we go. Maybe those two. Ooh. Okay, autosave. Thank you. I mean it doesn't matter that these are still designated. Yeah, some of these diagonals won't be reached, but we'll fix that later. I guess it's time to put another cut in here. Wow, 50 minutes into it. Man, time flies when you're dwarfing. Oh, I was kind of hoping to have the, the new dining hall set up before the end of this video. But as per usual, I've queued up an infinite amount of jobs for a non-infinite amount of dwarves. But yeah, it's the, the construction is really busy work. I mean, so is the smoothing. But I, I want this moving, and I want the construction. This roof is certainly going to take a while to build. Uh, what we could do, hang on, I just realized. What I should do is I should have a block storage on the surface. So bars and blocks, except I only want blocks of stone. Um, And I guess what I might want is... So I click on the catch-all. So when the blocks get made, they can be dropped over in the catch-all, but then eventually what they'll do is they'll get brought up to the surface. I wonder if they'll get brought bin by bin. Maybe I should just stop blocks from being stored here. No, the convenient thing would be if the blocks are put into a bin here and then someone takes the whole bin and moves it up simultaneously. But in theory, this will provide blocks closer to the surface, maybe by a bulk hauling job. Because right now with construction, they're going to go all the way down, grab a single block, bring it up and finish this. If people can bring a whole box from the ground level up to here, and then the constructors just grab that, that will dramatically speed it up. I'm just not sure if this is going to bring a whole box at a time. Or if people are still going to grab individual blocks and bring it here. Box versus block. I mean, in any case, it's getting done, and I think it's something we want to have get done. And at some point, what might happen is we might um, punch through here or wrap it around with a like another wall and some towers that we can shoot out of. Right now, our only goal is just general protection. But yeah, some towers, and maybe not even connected to here. We might have a smattering of towers that are just kind of pillboxes that are accessible from underground, right? From here, you climb up, you get into your tower, you shoot in a few of these things. Maybe that's something we look into. I don't know what our defense will be. We did something similar to that with our Seven Pillars run. It was still one of my absolute favorite runs of Dwarf Fortress. Really good. See, wheelbarrows here. I suspect they're picking up this coal, which is really nice. Still haven't seen any blocks get brought up to the surface. Now, we may be having a hard time keeping up with the demand for the blocks. Um, especially if we're still making cabinets and coffers. That is absolutely true. What I've done before is with my stone workers is I've set some up to be the ones that make blocks because they're different jobs. I just remembered. Um, even though it's all done at the stone workers workshop, people who are assigned to stone cutting are the ones that make blocks. And we might not want the stone cutters to be getting in the way of the stone crafters. No carvers stone carvers make furniture stone cutters, make the blocks and stone crafters make well, mostly mugs very confusing um, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the block job over here out of the generic work order so blocks will no longer be assigned to this stone workers workshop which is allowed to take just general work orders these guys won't take general work orders they're just going to get individual make rock block jobs which what I'm going to do here uh, nope, I don't want to do that. I want to do this. Repaint. Delete. Accept. This uh, stone stockpile, which is for non-economic rock, I want to paint this, and I want to add an area over here. So there we go. So the non-economic blocks, some will be here, some will be stored over here. I don't know how they'll prioritize where they get put first. But those are both places that want it. Because this guys will have to be able to make uh, blocks. 
And then from here, I guess the blocks will get maybe brought there, there, and then eventually brought to the surface. I suppose I could expand the catch-all for this area here. That might help with the... Just throw me some blocks over there. Yeah, and this whole catch-all catch -all stockpile will go away at some point. I think I was about to end the episode, wasn't I? I feel like that might have been. Okay, this bridge is up. So before I do, uh, let's rename this to Trade Tunnel Bridge. And then we'll link you to there. Okay. That's going to be great because then, should we get suddenly attacked, we can seal ourselves in. Uh, possibly two ways once the, uh, the roof is done. But at the very least, the internal tunnel, which is going to be good. Folks, thanks a lot for watching another episode. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.